Let's dive into how Dijkstra's algorithm works to find the shortest path in a graph. Here, we have a graph with seven nodes, each connected by edges with specific weights. First, we need to initialize a table to track our progress. In this table, the first column lists the nodes. The second column represents the cost or shortest distance required to reach each node from our starting point. Finally, the third column shows the previous node in the shortest path, helping us trace the route from the starting point to each node. Now let's set node A as our starting point. Initially, we'll set the distance to A as zero since we're starting from there, and we'll mark all other nodes with infinity to indicate that they are currently unreachable. Now, we will initialize a priority queue where the element with the minimum cost will have the highest priority. Initially, the queue will contain only one node, the starting node. Then, we will start the algorithm. A loop will run as long as the priority queue is not empty. Inside this loop, we will pop the top element of the queue and check all of its neighbors. First, we pop node A and inspect its neighbors. Let's start by visiting node F. Note that you can visit the neighbors in any order, it doesn't matter. To calculate the cost of reaching node F, we add the cost of the current node to the cost of reaching the neighbor from the current node. In this case, the cost of A is 0, and the cost of reaching F from A is 3. Adding these gives us a total cost of 3 to reach node F. Next, we compare this calculated value with the current cost of F in the table. Since 3 is less than infinity, we update the cost of F to 3 in the table and set the previous node for F to A as it was reached via A. Finally, we add this newly visited node F to the queue along with its updated cost. Then, we proceed to the next neighbor. Here, the cost of reaching B is 2, which is less than infinity. So we will update it to 2 and set the previous node to A. Then we will push this newly updated node into the queue along with the cost as the priority and proceed to the next neighbor. Now, the cost to reach node D is 5, which is less than infinity. So we will update it to 5, set the previous node to A, and then push node D into the priority queue along with the cost. Now that all the neighbors of node A have been visited, we need to proceed to another node. To do this, we will pop elements from the priority queue. Since B has the highest priority, i.e. the lowest cost, we will pop it and visit all its neighbors, just like we did with node A, updating the costs and previous nodes in the table if we find any shorter paths. Here, the cost of reaching node F via B is 6, which is more than the cost of reaching it via A, so there is no need to update this. Similarly, node A is already at the shortest path, so there is no need to update it. Now, getting to node E via B costs 3, which is less than infinity, so we will update it, set the previous node to B, and push E onto the priority queue with priority 3. Similarly, the cost to reach C via B is 9, which is less than infinity. So we will update it to 9, set the previous node to B, and insert C into the queue along with the cost. Now, all the neighbors of node B have been visited, and we need to go to another node. So we will pop the next element. Here, both nodes E and F have the same priority of 3, and which one to choose really depends on how the priority queue is implemented. Let's remove node E from the queue and visit all of its neighbors. Let's visit this node G first. Remember, the order of visiting neighbors does not matter. Here, the cost of reaching G via E is 6, which is less than infinity. So, we will update it to 6, set the previous node to E, and add G to the queue along with the cost. Next, let's visit node D. This one is interesting because the cost to reach here via E is 4, which is less than the earlier cost of 5, so we will update the new cost to 4 and also update the previous node to E. Now we also need to update the cost of it inside the already inserted element in the priority queue. To do this, we will find that element and change the cost from 5 to 4. This process is called decrease key. Now, the time complexity of this decrease key operation really depends on the type of data structure used to implement the priority queue. If it is implemented using a binary heap, the operation will have a logarithmic time complexity. However, if it is implemented using a Fibonacci heap, 
the amortized cost of this operation can be constant time. Now, the algorithm will continue working similarly for all the nodes, visiting them one by one, checking all their neighbors and updating the table if necessary. I will pause the voiceover here until the queue becomes empty and the algorithm stops. Now that the priority queue is empty, the algorithm will stop here. Using the table, we can now find the shortest path from node A to any other node. Imagine we have to find the shortest path from A to C. First, we will check the previous node of C in the table, which is node E, so we will add node E. Then we check the previous node of E, which is node B, so we will add node B. Finally, we check the previous node of B, which is node A, so we will add node A. This sequence gives us the shortest path from node A to C. Now, the time complexity of this algorithm depends on the type of data structure used to implement the priority queue. In the most efficient case, a Fibonacci heap is used. Here, insertion into the queue is a constant time operation and it happens v times, where v is the number of nodes or vertices, so the total time for insertion is big O of v. The initialization of the table also takes big O of, of v. Extracting the minimum from the priority queue is a big O of log v operation, and it happens v times, contributing big O of v log v. Finally, the decrease key operation, 
which is a constant time operation in a Fibonacci heap, can happen at most E times, where E is the number of edges. So the overall time complexity of the algorithm is big O of E plus V log V. Now, the algorithm requires space for the priority queue, which takes big O of V, and for the table, which also takes big O of V. Hence, the overall space complexity will be big O of V. Now, if the priority queue is implemented using binary heaps, the time complexity may degrade to big O of E plus V log V due to the less efficient insertion and decrease key operations compared to a Fibonacci heap.